Um, for this segment, I'm joined by Tim Vass from the YouTube channel Mordian Glory. Hi, Tim. Hi, Liam. How's it going? I'm fabulous. How are you? I'm very good, thank you very much. So, um, um, I reached out to Tim, um, obviously, because um, uh, he attended an event, uh, the Critical Hit Element, a uh, Critical Hit event, sorry, at Liverpool, I think it was in, if I remember right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the weekend there. Um, I'm not going to go too, too heavy into the kind of events of the weekend, because like they can be found if you so wish to go and kind of see them. Um, but um, I haven't kind of chatted to Tim over the weekend. Um, I kind of checked out his YouTube channel and I was kind of like, holy shit, this is some really cool shit. Yeah. Um, so I basically just said to Tim, do you want to come on and, and kind of talk about your channel? Because so much cool shit on here. Um, like, I was sitting just before we started recording. Like, I, I'm probably not as much of an Imperial Guard fanboy as, as you are. But I, I had a KD in Army back in the day. Yeah. Um, but the, the Mordains are just so cool. But... Um, so yeah, I mean, do you want to just maybe tell us a bit about your 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 channel and, and the kind of stuff that you like to kind of cover? Yeah, oh yeah. Well, thank you very much for the intro, and of course, you know, thank you very much for having me as well. It's you know really appreciate it. Um, no problem at all. Yeah, so I do the Morning Glory channel. I uh, started it back in sort of middle of seventh edition when uh, Imperial Guard were just getting absolutely uh, smashed. You know, in the days of uh, Riptide formations and uh, Invisible Wolf stuff. <laughs> And, Aye. Uh, I mean, I think I think Imperial Guard, like I, when I did them, it was it, it wasn't quite a full on leaf blower list yeah. that I ran, but it was kind of close. But I think since then, I mean, you still see elements of Imperial Guard lists, but I think you're right in the sense of they were not the the, the supreme power that no. they once were. No, they'd fallen far from the days of of leaf blower. And um, what I essentially did is I I saw every time I was I was sort of on a forum or something, um, I would see people just saying there's no point in collecting Imperial Guard, they're completely uncompetitive. And that really annoyed me because I've been I've been collecting them for sort of fourteen years. Um been doing it since I was eleven years old. And uh, it really annoyed me because I, I used to go to quite a few uh, small tournaments and big tournaments running my Imperial Guard. And I used to do okay, you know, respectively. Like I used to get if it was a you know five day five game day or uh, weekend, I'd, you know, get you know, two or three wins. I'd, you know, never go getting full whitewashed every time. So I decided it was time to sort of, there's a lot of false information out there. People were sort of still saying the best way to play guard was, you know, with mech, which was wrong. So I just started the channel to basically just talk about Imperial Guard tactics and how to not just completely lose with them every single time. Um, did that all through 7th. And then in 8th edition, obviously, Imperial Guard have got very popular because they've got quite a bit better. They've been nerfed a little bit now, but um, basically that's it. So it's all just about guard tactics and Imperial Guard battle ports and it's, I like to think of it almost as a sort of one-stop shop for anyone who's thinking about getting into the Imperial Guard, basically. See, that's really cool as well, because like, I've, I've done so many interviews on this podcast, and the, the, the spectrum is enormous. Like, you get, like, for example, like, say yourself, who's like, right, I'm loyal to a particular faction, and I'm not, and okay, having fluff lists is cool, I've done that myself, but you're like, I'm going to try and make this faction as toothy as possible, and I'm going yeah. to try and squeeze the... Squeeze the no the, the cheesiness, but squeeze the the, the strengths out of this particular list, and and, and kind of try it, and kind of um, do as well as possible. But I mean, I, I I'm kind of in the same vein as you. I mean, I like to take things with teeth, obviously, yeah. but like I'm particularly loyal to like Eldar. I mean, mm. and I know you go, oh Eldar, I can hear the yeah, I can hear no. the collective, I can hear the collective eye rolls on the internet. <laughs> but I mean, my, my eternal comeback to that statement is I own thirty metal wraith guard, you know. Yeah. So that just tells you how long I've been collecting Eldar for. Do you know what I mean? So I feel no shame in my loyalty <laughs> faction, but. Um, I, I know what you mean, it's like, you want to kind of, I don't know what it is, like, you just kind of get, like, this particular loyalty to faction, you kind of like, no, I'm no jumping ship, it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, there's something here, I'm going to make it work, yeah. and, like, sometimes it backfires catastrophically, but, I mean, sometimes you get you get some, some good wins. Well, that's exactly it, and, um, you know, I, I have nothing against um, anyone who collects any kind of faction, because... You know, like you said, there's every faction has gone through its ups and downs, and I, you know, when I, you know, started uh, when Eighth Edition first came out, uh, and everyone was saying how overpowered Imperial Guard was, I had had to deal with a lot of people when I did the tournaments going, oh, another Guard bandwagoner, and it's like, nah, oh, nah, mate, so I hate that phrase, man. Can't, like, kind of been doing this for 14 years. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! See, I, I I can I can understand where the comments are coming from because I think one of the best things about the start for guard at the start of eighth was like the the conscript blob that was yeah. fearless, and that was obviously mighty. And that was like and really good in, in any kind of imperial list really because like you've got that big fearless blob and it just was so it had so many different applications. Um, I mean, 
I, I can totally hear where you come from though. It's like when you've had this armor, you've had the painted for donkeys, and you're kind of like, no, fuck off. Yeah, this yeah, is totally. Yeah. This is. Oh no, I, I know exactly how you feel. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. And um, I have no, you know, I have no problem with playing against absolutely filthy lists. I mean, that's actually part of the fun part of the challenge. And one of the things I like to do with my channel is is go out there, go and play some of you know the hardest lists that I can find. Um, yeah. And the, the whole point of that is, and then I have, you know, I do a, like a know thy foe section and I point these lists out so that people are aware of them and, you know, I, at least they can learn from my experience if I, you know, beat it or struggle against it. Absolutely. So, like, just to kind of touch on, like, so you were saying you kind of take, uh, you try and kind of compete with the, with the cheese, so to speak. What did you take at the weekend? What was on your list? <laughs> so, I took my, even though I'm called Mordian Glory, I took my new Armageddon Steel Legion army which ah, are you okay which i've been uh, again it's one of these things i used to love the arm against the legion thing i was finally able to sort of put that stuff together um and I basically i ran a really fluffy but not weak um arm against the legion list so um it had just to give a very quick overview there's six chimeras six infantry squads in each, uh in one on each chimera six characters one one on each chimera um, and then there was uh, three Lehman Russes, two decked out with all the plasma you can get on them. Uh, one of them, um, oh sorry, four Lehman Russes, one was a tank commander, two Conquerors from Forge World, and two of the plasma ones, basically. Conquerors, what are they like? Are they any good? Uh, yeah, they're, they're too good because people, when you tell them what they do, just kill them in turn one and two. <laughs> all right, okay. So what, what, what they do, um, there's basically no excuse not to run them over a regular even Russ at this point, is if you're allowed for right. a forge world, you should take a Conqueror, because it's the same exact same stats as a Battle Cannon, uh, except for it's got a 48-inch range, so it's a little bit shorter, So because regular Battle Cannon's got... 48 is still pretty decent, though. 48 is more than enough. There's no point in the tournament when I was, you know, crying out for 72-inch range. Uh, but the thing is, it comes with a, a Storm Bolter uh, included, and if you shoot right. that Storm Bolter, you don't even have to hit. It specifically says you, you just you shoot it at a target, that when you shoot the main cannon at the same target, you re-roll all hits. What? Yeah. That's the best Storm Bolter ever? Yep, it's Coaxial Storm Bolter. And it's very specifically worded, and I've done a video on it, it's very specifically worded, it says re-roll all hits, not all failed hits. So that obviously is important for modifiers. Ah, right, okay. So if, you know, obviously if, you, so if it says re-roll all, fail, all failed hits, then natural hits of fours, you wouldn't get to re-roll. Right. But the Conqueror says all hits. So if you want to re-roll the ones that are successful, you can do if you want to, but you know, I don't advise it. See, that, that's quite interesting because like, like I, we, we talk about like dice getting into quote-unquote the Phantom Zone yeah. because the modifiers get applied mm. after the fact. Yeah. Um, and that, that's the, I mean, 8th edition's been over a year now, but like, it's still one of the most subtle differences. Yeah, I really like that fr phrase, the Phantom Zone. I might steal that. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> It was it was literally like um, what the fuck is going on with my dice here? Yeah. Like, oh. but, um, yeah. No. Totally. I mean, I was having a look on your channel, um, and like you get so much cool stuff. I mean, you've you've got like I'm just kind of I'm literally just scrolling through your kind of playlist. Oh, you've got you. like um, you've got list reviews. You've got battle reports. Yeah. I did like I've got to say I did like the the, the Black Templar Freddy's uh, playlist <laughs> because like like you, you were saying like before we started recording like the Imperial Guard were like, your first kind of love and yeah, faction, yeah. but. For me, like I remember still buying. See that the kind of playlist video you've got that that Warhammer Forty K rulebook picture. Yeah. That was that was what made me go. I want to get these mass these mental space yeah, priests yeah. who are just going like persecute everybody totally and insanely. And I remember having Codex Armageddon and getting like the rules for like the Land Raider yeah. Crusader and like the Emperor's Champion and stuff like that. And it was just oh man. Yeah. And I'm, it's it's like and, and you were you I think if I remember right there was Armageddon Steel Legion. Yeah rules in yeah. there as well yeah they had it's some really funky rules like they had rules for um hive militia which were sort of a mixture of people who had been pressed into service and gangs that had volunteered to fight loads of wacky things in there yeah oh excellent so um uh, what have you been working on recently then so like what's your kind of um what's your kind of latest project being you continuing to work on your kind of imperial guard or have you got any sort of projects coming up what's next for you I got a, um, i've got too many projects on at the moment i'm having to Come up with the proper schedule for them. So basically, uh, Black Templars are, uh, are finished as much as I want to do with them because I've got my Black Tide now. That's project done. I've got some other. Is it literally just approximately one million Space Marines in power armor? It is one hundred and five Marines. 
Wow. My hero. <laughs> um, so that's done. My Armageddon Steel Legion are finished now. There's, I've got a few side models, but for the, in terms of taking the army to tournaments, I'm, I'm basically I'm fine with that. Um, the next one I'm working on is my Gene Steeler Cult. Right. And, or is this? An, did you get any tooth and claw sets? Uh, not yet. I've, I've got and bought way too much, and I've got to go and build it all up and paint it all up and everything. But um, oh, see, so see, as cool as it is buying new toys, there isn't anything more depressing than sitting. You're working on something, and you just take a look to your left, and you <laughs> see like the big pile of shame it's, growing there, and you're kind of like, oh, it's not too bad. It's it's a medium pile of shame. I mean, it's all <laughs> built. It's nearly all base coated. Um, and I've, only, and I've only sort of bought half the models I need for the full army, so I've, I've withheld from going completely nuts until the codex actually drops. But um, I'm doing my Gene Sealer cult up as um, Brotherhood of Nod. For, oh my god, we, we're going to get on so well, by the way, because again, we were talking again before this, like, I, I love Nod, I mean, see, for our podcast, see, like, we've changed our music a wee bit now, but I used to have like, the Nod Crush music oh, for nice. kind of fade out music and stuff <laughs> like that. Tiberian Sun's easily one of the best games ever. It's perfect, um, but, yeah. but, um, again, regular podcast listener will probably be sick of me talking about this project, but I've been doing my, my, my June-based yeah. uh, House Ordos theme from Imperial Knights Project. And, uh, Tim was saying, oh, or House Ordos my favourite faction too, and I see that your Emperor Battle for June playlist on your channel yeah. as well, so really go and check out the Mordy and Glory channel, everybody, because it's just full of cool content. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to do uh, lots of Let's Plays, but I sort of focus on my Warhammer side of things. Well, that stuff's all still up there if people want to go and check it out. See, that's the thing. Like, uh, unfortunately, as kind of real, real life develops and progresses, you kind of find that like your your time for um, fictional sci fi vices, uh, you have to kind of uh, focus yeah. on it, like one or two areas. You know, yeah. it's like do I play Warhammer or do I play the computer? And it's kind of like as much as I wish I had time for both, it just doesn't happen, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, totally. Yeah. So, so. Um, Hey, what are you working on in terms of models? Actually, we're talking about your kind of unpainted pile of shame. Have you got a tournament you're gearing up for next, or are you just building some fluff stuff? What are you working on? Um, I'm gonna just yeah, I'm t gonna take a little bit of a break from the tournament to be honest. Um, just to, just to chill out. It's been quite intense recently, obviously. Um, yeah. But I'm basically I'm just gonna work on my GC local until the codex comes out. I've got um, yeah. a whole bunch of neophytes which I'm painting up in traditional uh, nod colours. Uh, oh I'm man! Working on um, revamping my uh, classic world eaters, which is as many world eaters and rhinos as one can fit in an army. Um, Have you seen the rules for that new? What's it called? Uh, Ab Ab Abominant or something like that. Yeah, I'm yeah. On that shit straight away. That's really oh, good. he looks like a bad motherfucker. He's really, really good. Um, he's he's an auto include. He's eighty points. You, if you don't, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't take him. See, you know. See, that's the thing. Like, obviously, we don't know enough about Gene Steeler cults to kind of make a prediction on this yet. But I think that if Gene Steelers can ignore the fifty percent rule, I don't know if they will. But if they can, I expect them to be back with a massive vengeance. To be honest, I've played my cult quite a bit now. Uh, sort of because I like, um, yeah, you know, when you're just playing friendly games, I sort of proxy a bit of my guard stuff so i know what to buy you know, i don't want to make a bad you know sort of yeah, yeah totally um and one thing that they really uh, the 50 percent thing isn't really a huge deal because you kind of you want some units to start on the board so you know there's always going to be some times when you want to have stuff on the board from the beginning what they really yeah. really need is a way to have more reliable turn one ambushes because at the moment yeah. the only way to do it is to ambush pretty much reliably guaranteed is to use the Primus and the uh, unique genes to look all stratagem. I think it's they come from below. Um, yeah. Or, or it's something it's something like that. It's, it's like a stratagem basically lets you roll uh, an additional dice for the uh, cult ambush table. And if you have a Primus who's helping you cult ambush, it's three dice. And then the Primus's own rule, and this does tally up and it's confirmed by Games Workshop, uh, lets you re-roll the dice. So you get basically three dice re-rollable to get that to get a to six, get a six, which you're yeah. basically guaranteed to get a five or six. But at the moment, you can only use that strategy once per turn. So at the moment, right. you can only ambush one thing absolutely reliably, what one thing a turn, and you need to be able to. Yeah. Uh, you need two. If you can get two in, that's it. Yeah, there's absolutely going to be more stratagems to kind of help with that stuff. Um, and there's going to be. I mean, you've got, you've got between stratagems and faction attributes. Um, there's going to be something, surely. You've got to think. Yeah. 
I mean, if, I think there should be. I think they, I think they should keep the one they've already got, which is one command point, and there should yeah. be another one, which is just like it two or even three command points, something that is basically just says when you ambush a unit, pick the result of the call ambush table. Yeah. Just, just See, like, can you? Can, yeah. Can you imagine that with a big massive fuck off unit of gene stealers or pure strains? Yeah, I mean, genes. Pure strain gene stealers are absolutely insane. Aye, aye, just a touch. See, like, see, this thing is well, like, like, my mate, uh, my co-host, and this, he always plays Tyranids as well. Yeah. And, like, see, just gene stealers, man. I don't know what it is. Gene stealers just give me the fear. Because oh, it's like, yeah. I know that they just fucking rock your world when they get into combat with you. It's, and it's just, it's, oh. The one thing I'd say, and it's something I've learned the hard way with gene stealer cult, but now it really makes a huge difference. This is advice to anyone out there who's obviously tooth and claw hyping up the gene stealer cult. Um, it's all about those crunchy combos. It's all about more... It's, crunchy it's, combos, it's, I love that phrase. It's, it's all about <laughs> those, those crunchy combos. Um, and it's like, it's you know, some armies have very basic combos, like Space Marines, oh, put a Captain Lieutenant there, reroll all the ones, great. That's a very easy one to do. But it also really takes you so far. Whereas with Gene Stealer it's one of these things where you, you take, you know, for example, a 20-man blob of Gene Stealers. That means all your guys are getting plus one attack, which means your Gene Stealer is all, already up to four attacks per guy, which is insane. You then ambush them with the Primus, which, uh, as we've said, will get you a, a basically, if you do it right with the stratagems, gets you a guaranteed ambush on a six. Then, yeah. because you're ambushing with your Primus, and your Primus is within six inches of the Gene Stealers, they get plus one to hit. So that now your Gene Stealers are hitting on twos. And then yeah. another combo, another just throw these crunchy combos in. Another combo <laughs> is you have a Magus who has an 80, I think it's 12 or 18 inch range on the Psychic Power, Might from Beyond, which gives them another plus one strength, plus one attack, which means suddenly... You've got 20 Gene Stealers with five attacks, so that's 100 attacks, hitting on twos, strength five. Um, yeah, that, that, that's um, like severe fucking deletion, yeah. literally. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, and like, I, I, I just remembered as well. Um, have you ever read the Imperial Guardsman's Uplifting Primer? Yeah, of course, I am a Guardsman. So, like, <laughs> one of my, one of my favourite. Um, one of my favourite excerpts in that one is, it's like um, it's like a data, it's like a cheat sheet about gene stealers, yeah. and like the, and the, it's just a page of lies basically. Yeah. It's like um, this is like a slow lumbering creature. You have many seconds to unload <laughs> las gun rounds into this thing. Make sure you hit it a lot, um, because if it gets to you, it will kill you. But don't worry, you'll have loads of time. <laughs> and it's like oh, I never forget reading that one. Kind of like I read you fucking liars. Yeah, I love the. Um... The only one I can really remember is the one where it's talking about how to survive if you're a troop transport and you get sucked out into space accidentally. You've got. Oh, to, I don't remember that one. You've got to make sure you hold your breath and uh, uh, do breaststroke to get back to the spaceship. <laughs> something like that. It's something along those lines. I don't remember it exactly. Oh, I did. I, see, uh, that, that's why I love the Imperial Guard. I've just got so much character when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the things that makes me just come back to them time and time again. That's the thing, is that like, you kind of find the faction and you kind of go, I really identify with that characterful uh, attribute or element, yeah. and you're kind of like, yeah, the, 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 this is kind of like the style for me, and you're kind of like, yeah, this, I mean, like, it's dead funny, my pals always say, um, for my armies I've got, ironically, for, I don't play turners, but they always saddle me with this label, they always say I've got instinctive behaviour lurk, <laughs> so I'm kind of like, because I like to just destroy you from afar, but, um, no, like, I, I'm getting better recently, like, I've got a lot of, a lot of armies get, like to get all close and personal these days, mm. um, and kind of do the business, but certainly when we're doing that against the fucking gene stealer cult list, <laughs> Um, because yeah, I mean, you end up with what you call it, like a, a Goliath rock saw to the face or something like yeah. that. Even their weapons sound cool. Yeah, I mean, there's I run three of the Goliath trucks with the big rock grinders on the front. I think they're the, po probably one of the coolest models uh, in you know 40k at the moment. You just it's a it's a big truck with a massive saw on the front. I mean, you can't. Does can't it get any better than that? It? Go, it's a close call. The stats for it is it's a close combat battle cannon. I mean. <laughs> I like that. It's a close it's a combat close, battle it's a, cannon. It's a close combat battle cannon. If you, if that doesn't tickle your fancy, then I don't know what will. Well, if that doesn't tickle your fancy, you you, you don't bleed Imperial Guard. Yeah, basically. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. uh, but I know it's Imperial Guard. But you can can you take that? Can you take that? Is that part of the the Astro Militarum units that they can take? No, it's the Goliath truck. Uh, Goliath rock grinder is Gene Stealer cult. But you ah can, right, okay, okay, but okay. Via the Brood Brothers rule, you can just. Uh, if you take a detachment right. of Gene Stealer Cult, you can take um, a detachment of Imperial Guard, 
And so right. the, the rock grind is a heavy support. So you take one genius to look at character, three of these things, you bang it in a spearhead detachment, suddenly you've got three of them in your Imperial Guard army. Yeah, that's pretty tasty. Do you find that you mix and match them a lot? Um, I think it's more powerful to mix and match them, uh, but I, I am a bit of a purist. I quite like yeah. that. Yeah. I'm one of the, you know, like, I, like, I like to prove that pure and pure guard is still, you know, okay in a See, as well. See, I'm like, for example, like, I, I'm more of a taste the rainbow yeah. elder player. Yeah. But when I say that, like, e even when they were bad last edition, I used Harlequins in my list last edition as well. Cool. Like, I like failed in all three factions. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, e even like, see, see, I always use like bikes or skimmers, and like, mm -hmm. even I'd say like, Shining Spears are good, obviously, but Wind Riders are a bit pants these days. But I use them in my list still because it's like you know they've got they've got your Eldar bikes in the list. Yeah, well, exactly, and um, yeah, I mean, I think the whole point of eighth, you know, I myself prefer to use pure armies but i have no issue with anyone who uses mixed armies and this is this is eighth edition this is well since seventh edition where you've been allowed it's super yeah, you're allowed to do what you want so go for it go nuts no absolutely absolutely awesome well listen um tim thank you so much for joining us and uh, sharing uh, your website more and glory um and um, like, like I say, like, please feel free for, if, if you get any cool projects or anything on the go, um, come back and join us anytime. I will do. And I really appreciate you, uh, you know, taking the time and everything and inviting me on it. You know, it means a lot to me. Not no, anything for a fellow member of House Ordos. <laughs> Thank you very much. No problem. All right, Tim, thanks very much. I'll catch you later. See you later. Thank you.